Dropping the pass in trouble. He gets the pass away over the middle and it's picked off at the 20 yard line. Dansby makes the interception. Welcome back. This is Press Coverage Podcast. I'm your host, E. Dansby. The summer is upon us and you know we're back in podcast mode. No better way to kick it off with a guy who's made his name right here in the CSRA. Former Helsable Rebel, former defensive back for the Georgia Southern Eagles, and now cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts. It's Darrell Baker. Darrell, what's up, brother? Yes, sir. How you doing, man? Hey, man, pretty good. Hey, man, want to thank you for coming down today. I know you know busy, flying everywhere, training, OTAs. I know you're taking out you know some time out of your busy schedule, man. So I definitely appreciate it. Something we've been trying to put together for a little bit now. I reached yeah, out to yeah. you a couple <laughs> times, man, and, but now we're finally here, man, to get it done, man. And I appreciate it, brother. No problem, man. But before we dive into your journey, man, on the football field, man, and, and you've come from Augusta here and now making it all the way to the league. First, I just want to dive into some this in your personal life, man. Father's Day was last week. I'm a father. You're a new father, man. You know, uh, newly engaged, as I've uh, seen. So what, what that experience been like for you, this, you know, these new roles in manhood? Uh, man, it's been great. Uh, just speaking on Father's Day, it feel good because, like, you know, man, you never really know when it's going to come. But, like, it's one of the best things that, that ever happened to me, like, just being a dad, having, right. like, a son especially. Like, that's my that's my, my little boy. That's my buddy for real. And, yeah, like, yeah. <clears throat> just being – in this world now, fiance, soon to be husband, that feels good as well, knowing I have like a family that to provide for now. Like it's Yeah, for real. Everything just like made me go that much harder because it's bigger than me, but I, I love it a lot. I'm having fun with it. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. I'm a guy, man, you know, just had a uh, daughter what, mm-hmm. three years well, yeah, about three years ago, her birthday's in October, she'll be three years old. Ooh, yeah. And I understand when you talk about, you know, providing for a family and this you know, taking on taking on that, especially when you're in going in and out of facility every each and every day in the games, you know, it's a new level of motivation when you're stepping on the field now because not only are you playing for yourself and your family, but you're playing for, you know, others that are looking up for you to, you know, to provide for them. Right. And like I said, it's a new level of motivation, man. So, like I said, shout out to that, you know, you know being a new father, now you're engaged. I'm a father, I'm married now, so I done, I done kind of done the steps, man. Congrats. Yeah, my, aniver- my anniversary was like, I'd be married, what, a month? Next month would be a whole year, man. Next month would be a whole year for me. So, it's wow, new for wow. me too, man, and, you know, you know, uh, embracing myself with my daughter, man. Like I said, I don't have a son, but at the same time, when me having my daughter, it's more like I see the athlete because my mom plays sports on what I play sports, so I see that athletic background and already at two years old, three years old. I don't know what she's what sports she's gonna choose: basketball, softball. I don't know, you know. But you know, whatever she do, soccer, we're gonna be there to support her, man. I think she could be successful. And so diving into you, you know, born in Panama City, Panama. Mm-hmm. You come here in the United States. You first arrived in Savannah, Georgia. So just give us a little, uh, a little, uh, a little bit about your background, man, and your upbringing. Oh, uh, that's crazy. You know that. Uh, but yeah, I was born in Panama. My family in the military, so they were stationed there. Okay. Uh, I ain't stayed there alone. Maybe a couple months, but uh, yeah, we moved right to Savannah, on Fort Benning. Uh, we did a couple years there. Then uh, we were actually right here in Augusta on Fort Gordon. So essentially, I grew up there for like half of my life and then out of here and helps with us so got a lot of siblings it's uh it's seven of us i got a twin yeah. sister uh it's also another set of twins the last two kids both of them boy and girl so okay it was always a lot of us in the house but i had fun with it just really stayed outside the whole day playing basketball football and all that with all my friends just you you know, be running the streets with your friends, doing yeah, whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, just in the neighborhood playing, man. That's how we all, uh-huh. that's mostly how we all come up from probably your era to my, from my era to your era. Now, maybe the last little bit of those areas when you see got kids just outside playing yeah. sports, you know, playing in, you know, basketball in the neighborhood, football in the neighborhood. We really don't see that in uh, with today's kids because like, we're now social media based, mm-hmm. you know, uh, everything with technology has kind of taken our kids and our athletes out of just outside all the time right you know we kind of you know when we're in the era of training now but when we was coming up it wasn't as many trainers or personal trainers yeah. or that's you know, specified in certain areas of sports or whatever sport it may be we just didn't have that so we kind of trained ourselves mm-hmm. in a way just by just playing with the people in the neighborhood just running the neighborhoods and playing ball and whatnot that's what i did you know what yeah. I mean? as i got older and became professional I, I reached out to people that in those you know specified in those things but like i said coming up we just train ourselves and do ourselves and, and, and we do it on our own on, on me, I remember like dog. My first ladder, I made that guy out of like some rocks and soda cans. I'm just out there in the front yard, just working. But like you said, there's no trainers in the area, so like yeah, either going off like 
what you see on TV, what you can get from YouTube, or like if you know somebody that can help out. Right, right. Boom, that that was the way you trained back then. So. Right, right. You just you know see what you see on TV or take what you know on YouTube. Somebody training or doing provide different things off social media. You just kind of take it, go in the backyard, the front yard, get with some you know, group of buddies, and you just get it in that way. Like I said, it was just totally different. You oh, ten, yeah. fifteen years <laughs> ago. Like I said, I'm thirty two now, so it's thinking back, man. Fifteen years ago, what it was like. It was never, you know, it's not like what it's like today with the yeah. seven on seven and. Um, this is the different rise of the, in sports, man. We just see you can play sports, your sport all year round. We didn't see yeah. football all year round back when I was coming out, and, and when you were coming up as well, you just didn't see that all around thing. Yeah, but now, <laughs> but now we got different leagues. It's, everything has grown. Yeah, everything it's beautiful to see, man. Uh, I love it for these kids coming up too because like it get them that exposure. Like you know, in our area, us growing up, we didn't really have that exposure like that for real not at because all. we didn't have as many resources. But for these kids now coming up is. It's great for them, man. I love it. Yeah, it is, man. It's de- it definitely is. And like I said, something that's definitely growing. I see a lot of the uh, little leagues around here definitely growing. They're getting bigger. Yeah. So it, it's something that's um, here in, in Augusta that's growing, man. I think it's going to play uh, huge dividends for our youth here. Yeah, I so, agree. Yeah, so, you know, I know you're in the league now, man, and we see you out on Sundays and you're doing your thing, but we know that to get to the league, that mindset cultivates at a younger at a younger age. So when did you just find your love for the game of football? Uh I found my love in uh, tenth grade. I began playing in seventh grade. Okay, but like really finding that love is like okay, I'm out here. I'm I see I'm really good because I'm winning a lot of reps against my peers and my teammates and everything. But I'm like, man, let me just start to take this serious. Yes. Uh, basketball was really my first love, but football just came yes. about. I just saw how naturally good I was, so I began to like just work at it and work at it, and uh, it it gave me something to chase like. Cause football is a game. It's like it's never ending improvement. Like it's always something you can improve on. Right, right. And then, man, like just working out in that front yard every single day, no matter how many times. I just made it a goal to like everybody that's riding past you gonna see me. Like you gonna see it started here for me to get to the league later. Yeah. So that yeah. was like one of my goals right there. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's definitely what's up. Like I said, you know, me as well. Coming up, I was a basketball guy. You know, naturally could play the game of football, but I was a basketball guy. Mm-hmm. You know, family being from D.C., dad was a good basketball player and stuff like that. So I was a basketball guy. It was, you know, challenged to play the game of basketball. Got into it I mean, football. Got into it my eighth grade year. And, you know, got into high school, started playing, man, and just never looked back. It just right. Everything kind of unfolded for me, you know what I mean? So, you know, you come here, you're playing in the seventh grade, and you get your start, but then you go to Helsinki, uh High School, and you get your, you know, uh, playing time there. So how was this, you know, the high school experience and playing high school football for you? Uh, the high school experience was uh, pretty good. So I started as a freshman, uh, and there were some guys ahead of me that were like, oh, man, yeah, you're not going to start. We got too many good people. But I was always one of those guys. Like, I love stuff like that. I use it as my motivation. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I'm going to just keep my head down to work. But uh, starting off for years, making plays, uh, got better each and every year. And then uh, it really just started to, to take off. Like, as I just kept working, kept working. Like, man, in high school, I'd be, like, going to the Y. Up on, right up on Peach Orchard Road at like let's say 5:30 in the morning before school, I do my workout. What like six, seven period during school, right. uh, have practice and come back and work out again. But it was like I had the mindset of like I'm not preparing myself to dominate against these guys right now. I had the mindset back then, even in high school, it was like I'm preparing to dominate in the league. So right, right. You know, back then I'm DMing guys like uh, Des Bryant, Des Bryant, like what can I do today to be better than you? Like <laughs> yeah, I wish yeah. I still had the DM, but it's like. That was all my 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 mindset to prepare for the pros now. That way, make it easier later. But the high school experience was fun, man. I I loved it a lot. I wasn't the guy to like go out and party, right? And right. all this, this, and that. Really hang out. I mean, of course, I hung out with my friends, but not really like that. Most of my time was just spent working out outside all day long. So. Yeah, and, and like you said, it starts in high school, man. It starts from going when you get to high school. And now you're getting into, you know, your junior varsity. And that's when you get to the varsity level. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 on your side, you definitely you play varsity. From the ninth grade on up, so you're a four year starter. So you see the level of expectation, the level of you know what it takes to get to the next level, to get to college and play. Mm-hmm. And because you know, and we're gonna get into this in the next thing that you know, being here in the CSRA, we don't get the looks that I feel like we should. Mm-hmm. You know, coming out of here, and you know, we talk about the game of football. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we, sure. did, we did. We just don't get those looks. So you know, you have a pretty good career at Helsinki, but you like, I, like I just said, you know, we know this area, the CSRA, to be this heavily under recruited when it comes to college football for whatever reason. I don't know, but it's definitely. A lot of talent here. When you was playing, when I was playing, huge talent here. With some guys that just been overlooked, so you don't get any offers. You decide to walk on at Georgia Southern. So what? 
So why don't you believe that you got any offers and what made you decide Georgia Southern? Uh, so I believe, uh, you know, my stats wasn't like crazy or anything. We wasn't a team that just threw the ball a lot because I went to college as a wide receiver. Gotcha. And then I transferred over to a uh, defensive back. But uh, it, it's really it's really hard to like get those looks out here. Like you have to have, you know, people trying to put the players out and all that. Like yeah. nowadays you see really? parents pushing their kids and yep. all that. But that's also like with the power of social media. Social media wasn't as popular back then as it was now. Yeah, so I mean, wasn't. I understand it was a little bit harder and all that. And then also with like teams, you have to win games. I only went to the playoffs one time, my high school right. career. We lost in the first round. Uh, but I think that's also a big part of it. But um, now it's a little bit different game. Like I said, for the kids, they have all these resources. And then it's going to take for like people like me and you to like start trying to yeah. push these players out like – go and talk to these high schools and like give these kids some type of motivation just Definitely. to see that like it's possible. Yeah. But um uh, getting to Georgia Southern, how I chose that, um so I had the preferred walk on opportunity there. Um I never told nobody this story before, but uh, I remember Savannah State came up to my high school and uh I basically had told them like, no, nah, I'm not going there. Yeah. And I think they tried to offer me a scholarship but I was like, nah, like I'm, I'm cool on it. Or whatever, because I wanted to like go somewhere and play like on a bigger level of football. You right, feel right, me? right. Like, I was one of the kids like you know you shoot for the stars, yeah. you at least reach the clouds. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, for so real. So like if you think big, you are gonna get somewhere yeah. bigger. But um, I actually committed to Troy for track, and yeah. then I was like, man, I don't want to run track. And then this is out in Troy, and if you know where Troy at, or if you ever been, to yeah, the I've been school, to Troy. I've been out to Troy. Yeah, Troy, Alabama. Dog, you know it's nothing out there. Ain't nothing out there. Yeah, nothing's <laughs> out in nothing Troy. Out yeah. there. So I was like, nah, I can't, I can't do this. So I was like, man, I'm gonna uh, take this walk on opportunity at Georgia Southern. Uh, went probably like a couple weeks right after high school and just got to work and uh, just visiting there. It felt like home, man. It was like it wasn't too big, but it wasn't too small. It was like a country feeling, and I was like, dang. So like this what it is they were just coming off like a winning year they won the championship i think like yeah. maybe two years before i got there so i'm like yeah i want to be a part of a winning program yeah, too definitely. not really yeah. winning like that in high school so i was like okay i need to like see what it's like right. so i can like get around that gotcha gotcha Cause, you know and you know me i can definitely lean on what you were talking about because you know playing at arc going there not a school that won hadn't won a playoff game since like 1950 something mm -hmm. Hadn't made the playoffs since like 1995 or 1997 or something like that. Get at Richmond, man. Have a stellar career. Um, 15 interceptions in three years. Dang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All, you know, 15 interceptions, a host of tackles. I don't know how many pass breakups, a bunch of interceptions dropped that could have been peaks. Mm -hmm. And I go to Tusculum, man. It's a, it was a, a small D2 school, man, out of the mountains. I was like, man, I felt like, and my grades were pretty good, but they were decent. They wasn't the best, best, but they wasn't the worst at all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a pretty decent score. Had some big schools looking at me like a Duke and stuff like that. Kind of was not familiar with the recruiting uh, thing. So I didn't know how hard it was to get into Duke. I didn't yeah. know it was like a, you know, this is like going to Vanderbilt. This is like going to Stanford, almost like the next level down from Ivy League. So for me, it was just like, oh, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah. So then commit there, you know, close to signing day. Georgia Southern was one of the teams looking at me. Their coach gets fired, goes to Murray State. Mm -hmm. I only got a few offers left. Well, I know I want to sign and go play college football somewhere. This is a full ride. Then I go. So, you know, I go to Tuscan for a few years and then get on the App State some years after that, man. But I can definitely, you know, lean on it. In this area, man, you just don't get the looks that you, uh, that we, I feel like there's, there's, um, that we earn here around here. Right. You know, it's a lot of athletes have come here and you don't even hear their name. When you talk about a Darrell Baker, who's with the Indianapolis Colts, when you talk about a Jalen Watson, who's uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs, who's won two Super Bowls back to back. You don't even hear shout about these. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to him. You don't even hear about these guys. And they were great, good. You guys were good players in high school, but they just don't get the looks that they should. And we, But you see, your guys are testaments that there's diamonds in the roughs here in Augusta. We just gotta yeah. get we just gotta get our get the recruits down here, get the scouts down here, get the coaches down here to come come into the schools and and like you said, funnel these kids out, man, and look at them actually invest in them and say, Hey, that's a kid over there. The, the program may not be winning, but he can help us win right. somewhere else. He can help us win in the Sun Belt, he can help us win in the Mac, he can help us win in the SEC, ACC. The school might not be that good in high school, but he's a good player nonetheless. I agree. So, you know, you walk on to Georgia Southern in 2016. Uh, coach Tyson Summers, he's the coach at the, head coach at the time. Uh, so what was it like, you know, being a walk on there? Uh, My experience, uh, it really wasn't bad or anything. Like, the hardest part was, of course, like, 
paying for school and like finding right. something to eat and all of that. But I really never had no problem with that. I had like a great group of guys or like my roommates, my friends, teammates yeah, yeah. and all that. And like even friends outside of that, like if I ask them like, yo, can you like order me a pizza or something? Like I'll pay you back later. They'll do it for me. And like yeah, I do the same for them or like even the guys like on the team, especially like Kendall Vildor, bro. It was like two years I was using his school ID because they were saying like we look alike and I would use his, swipe it just to get in the lunchroom yeah, every right. day. Yeah. So it was like just little stuff like that made my experience a little bit easier and everything. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people had already thought I was on scholarship anyway because I'm in practice making pr- plays every day, like even if I'm on scout team. But I was like, man, like coming from health, but I really didn't know too much about football, like right. coverages and all that. So. I had a real big learning curve. Yeah, but, big learning curve. So, like, that first year when I redshirted, I was like, man, let me just really take this time to, like, hone in on this defense, like, yeah. learn what this is and that is, like, learn route recognition and all that. Like, bro, I would sometimes be up at the stadium after practice, like, watching film to, like, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's crazy because uh, Tyson Summers, it was one day, I, I used to sit in the back of the meeting room because, you know, I'm a – freshman I'm gonna walk on and all that not right. getting no playing time but so one day in the meeting room he uh like stopped the whole meeting and he was like you know y'all one day or well, not even one day he said five years from now y'all that kid up there Daryl Baker would be in the NFL and I was like oh wow but I mean he just recognized all the work that I put in like right he just outside the building like just going in there like working out on my own, like, all the film study I was doing. Like, you could track that stuff on the iPad. So yeah, like, the iPad, so he, can, so he can see you putting in that extra work after, yeah. you know, on the after hours, after, you know, you going from the facility. Mm-hmm. He, he can actually see it. You yeah, know you know can actually see that. And, like, bro, I'm I'm in the meeting room. Like, I'm raising my hand to, like, ask questions. Even though I'm not even playing, like, bro, there was times, like, my coach at that time, he wouldn't even, like, acknowledge me. So my hand be raised for, like, five minutes. But you know what? I'm like, I'm gonna show you that I care. I'll show you that I want this. And like, yeah. in a couple of years, I'm gonna I'm make it happen. No matter where I'm at yeah. right now, it's, it's gonna get greater later. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about, no doubt about that. Cause like you said, putting in that extra work. You know, sometimes we have a vision, and sometimes people can see what God has for us. The vision. Sometimes you know we may see something in our lives, and be like, man, I'm gonna accomplish that over there. But other people don't see it. You know, mm-hmm. some of the coaches might not see it. Some of the players might not see it, but you see it. And mm-hmm. other people around you, they see it. Mm-hmm. You know, they see you putting in the work. They see you putting in the extra work. Like you say, walk on. A lot of the time the coaches, you know, they got jobs. They don't, they, you know, well, he's a walk on. He's not playing right now. So his question may not matter in, in the moment. Right. Not knowing that this guy is going to help us win a little later on. He's going to be a big player for us uh, down the road. You know what I mean? So, but sometimes we just overlook. Just overlook. Like I've been in that situation before. You know, at Tuscaloosa, I kind of came in and was a starter right away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I never really kind of ex- experienced that. But, you know, once I got into the league and, you know, coming in, you know, 90 man roster, undrafted free agent, <laughs> and he's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, don't, the reps are very, very slim. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, okay. Man, I'm trying to answer these questions. You're meeting like the president, but you're trying to understand. You know, it's a big, like you said, big learning curve going to um, uh, high school to college, especially when you're playing on the offensive side of the ball. And this, right. it's you know, you're learning a new playbook, you're learning new terminology, even in playing defense. And I, I had a good defensive back coach here in Augusta, man. Shout out to Larry Lee, that's out in Thompson right now. He prepared me for college. So when I would knew to cover two, cover three, cover four. And I mean it's all the same, but you you kinda throwing wrinkles in when you get to yeah. college, cover seven, cover six, man to man. But you learn the, the actual uh techniques of how to play defensive back, how to play right. corner, how to play safety, how to jam with the right hand, how to, you know, backpedal the right way, how yeah, to you know, know how to read the front shoulder as, you know, being a the safety, you know, uh two deep safety, one high safety reading, mm-hmm. you know, you just learning all this different stuff. But like shout out to you, man, for this, you know, just buckling down and putting in that work, that extra work that like you said, help you now get to the point you're at now. Right. You know that you wanted it, at, you know, even back then when you were not, not even playing, you know, people seeing that, hey, this guy, he really wants it. Mm-hmm. He really wants it. So in 2017, man, you start to somewhat get some playing time on the field, man. And um, in uh, 2019, you play, you know, 12 games, you, you make three starts. Of course, we know in uh, 2020, man, COVID kind of came and it kind of knocked some stuff off for a whole lot of people, but people definitely earned eligibility back. But in uh, 2021, this is kind of like your breakout year mm-hmm. at, at Southern, man. You're playing nine games. You made eight starts, 32 tackles, 27 solo, eight PBUs in the fourth formal, and your all-conference selection. So what was just your, um, you know, experience like, you know, playing at Georgia Southern, actually getting playing time, man, coming from being a walk-on, just going through that whole COVID situation. Because that was just hard for a lot of athletes, just not at, only at Georgia Southern, but in America, period. That was just, you know, it was just very, very difficult. You know, were we playing, were we not playing, mm-hmm. you know, you know, 
am I going to get a year back of eligibility? You know, what I'm going to do after this year? So what was this like? What was that like for you? So, man, that COVID situation, that was uh, essentially supposed to be my last year. Right. So uh, I had the mindset of, uh, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen, how many games we were going to play. Some teams only played six games, but we was uh, blessed to play, what, 12 or 13 games that year. Right. So I was like, dog, I'm going to just work my tail off. Um, this is my last year, like. I'm gonna just do what I gotta do. So it was a different type of focus uh, at that time. I think I always do better, like when it's like when something on the line, I, yeah. I can really like go for it for real and like give my all. But um, COVID, it, it was fun. Uh, I kind of liked the fact that it really wasn't no school. You could just really focus on football yeah, and yeah. all of that. Like especially that summer when they took out like summer workouts and spring workouts right. and all that. Like I was here up at uh, MTAG every day and shout out to uh, Ray Blinky. Yeah, yeah, Ray Blinky. Uh, yep. Yeah. He let me use his facility like free all the time, so I was up there like two times a day, sometimes just like getting it in, man. Right. So I really appreciate him for that. Um, there was times when I was driving to Atlanta, and again, shout out to my guy Kendall Vildor. I was uh, working out with Oliver Davis, and at this time, Kendall he was uh, in the league, but he had like a little B and B up yeah. in Atlanta, so he would like let me stay at his spot and all that when he wasn't there on the weekend. So, right, right. But I had like class and practice five days a week. Then on the weekends, I'm driving right up to Atlanta to get this work in. But, like, right. I just knew I was working for something, a tour something different. So, uh, it was like I had all that time on my hand. I was like, man, I'm going to just really make the most of it. And then, like, it just all started paying off. Like, because that was the first time I really started just training for the position, like, with an actual trainer, like, right, right. being able to get critiqued and everything. So, I'm like, like, he, I think Oliver, he saw some stuff in me. Like, you could just see my speed and explosiveness. So, I'm like, oh, man, I could really do this. Like, I got the size and everything. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, it gets to a point where, like, you start working out so much, you realize, like, you different. Yeah. You feel me? So, yeah. it's like, oh, I got a chance. So, now, at this time, you just got to put it on the field and, and let it. the work show. That's it. It's all about, you know, once you put the work in, it's all about just making the plays on Saturday or making the plays on Sundays. Because mm -hmm. the work is already done. You done put your work in and put yourself in position to make the plays. Now it's all a part about just making the plays once you get there. Right. And I do and I do some training now, man. Me and Jakar Hamilton that plays safety for the Dallas Cowboys, we do a lot of DB training here mm -hmm. in Augusta. Now we've started something new this summer, man. We locked in with a lot of high school kids here in the area. A lot of them are. Uh, juniors and seniors, and, mm -hmm. and, and our seniors, I, I'll tell them all the time, man, something's on the line. Right. You know, we only get ten. We only got ten games promised to us, and we're hunting some. What, what are you guys hunting? You right. know what I'm saying? Because next year in the summer, what does it look like? Because it won't be the same. Right. If you're not going to play college football, and all of us won't, that's the beauty about this thing. It's 25 or 30 of you guys out here every weekend. Only about four or five of you may go to college. That's so what are you going to do to give yourself the opportunity? Now, this 30, maybe one of you guys get a shot in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And you might play one or two years, three years. We know it don't last long. You know what I mean? You yeah. want it to last long, but it may not last. I, I thought coming from App State in the career I had, man, I'm going to play. I'm a, I, I feel like I had Pro Bowl potential just coming out and undrafted. But guy hurt my senior year, you know, in four years, and it was over with. Mm -hmm. Very, very 2016, 2020, I was back in Augusta. Quick, you know what I mean? So it didn't last long, but like I tell those guys out there every day, what are we chasing? Right. And we got to understand that time is of essence. And that's one thing God don't give us is time. Time is ticking on us. That's time true. is ticking on our seniors. You know, even you in the league now, time is ticking on us. So we got to make, you know, uh, steward our time wisely. I tell those guys that all the time. That we got to put the work in and right. steward our time wisely because time is not on our side. It's definitely ticking down. I only got 10 games left and it's 30, 40 you guys out here every weekend. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm here to, you know, I'm a realist. Four or five, you. We want to see all you guys go to college, mm -hmm. but it's just not realistic that all you guys go to college. Yeah. So yeah. what are we gonna do to give ourselves the best opportunity to get a, to get a chance? That's all we need is a, all you need is only thing you want is a chance. That's it. To get you get in it though. Now you just That's gotta it. kick it down. That's, That's it. You put your foot in the door and then you just kick it down from there, man. So you know, ultimately you you, know, you appear in fifty three games at Georgia Southern, make 20, 23 starts, one hundred eleven tackles, seventeen passes defended, two forced fumbles, three interceptions, man. So a good career. At Georgia Southern, man, with the Eagles, man, you know when I, when I talk about Georgia Southern, is you know they're okay. I kind of committed there, but playing at App State, man, those you know those uh, three years, man, and, and being in Boone, North Carolina, you know you develop a hate for Statesboro, you know what I mean. But you know it was never no hate for me because I knew some oh, yeah. of those guys down there. I knew Jerry McKinney, and uh, I knew Jay Bo Shaw, who was there early. Jerry McKinney, that's played for, I think he played for Kansas City now. Yeah. Won a couple Super Bowls with them. Knew a couple other guys from you know Georgia Southern because they were from Georgia and kind of been on some different uh, uh, recruiting trips and stuff like that. So I knew some of those guys. Yeah. So it wasn't ever really no hate for me, but you know, they back when we were playing them, man, they was like ranked like number one in Division One Double A, yeah. like number one, like the year when they played like Alabama and was very tough against them. Was like mm -hmm. my first year there, and man, they spanked us. 
they came to Boone and, they came to Boone and killed us, you know what I mean? But it didn't last long because we started <laughs> hey, we started to kind of have our way with them towards the end. But then you seen schools start to come out of nowhere, like a coastal Carolinas with the Lorenzo Talaferros and the Matt Hazels, who's yeah, from here. Hey, yeah, yeah, coastal <laughs> man, coastal they they got they had a, a tough. It was it's tough to go down into uh, Myrtle Beach or Conway and get a win sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I know all about it, man. So you know, just like most college players, man, we know that the opportunity to get to the NFL is very slim. But you know, you put yourself in position, and in tw- 2022, you get a chance as an undrafted free agent with the Arizona Cardinals. So what was your first training camp like? Uh, my first training camp, uh, it it wasn't like terrible. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. talk about OTAs first. OTAs yeah. was hard because that. At the time, that Arizona playbook was, like, so different than, like, what I've done in, like, college or any other defense I've ever been in. It was, like, a big learning curve for me. I was like, oh, I really got to know a whole lot of things. Right, right. So um, that was, like, the, the biggest part. But then, like, going into training camp, like, that little break going into that, I was like, okay, let me learn this a lot. But let me, like, really just focus more so on playing football than learning the playbook. Right. And then go out there in training camp. I'm making some plays and all that. Like, I'm having a good camp. Gotcha. At the time, but then I think it was like our first scrimmage. Uh, I catch an interception, and uh, my dog Greg Dorch he like tried to hit me to like get the ball out, and I land right on my shoulder. And uh, mind you, I had like separated my shoulder in high school, messed up my shoulder in college, so it was like the same one. Yeah. So when I landed on it, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, this don't feel right right now. I couldn't even get up and celebrate. So uh, I tried to go back out there. As soon as I tried to run, dog, it was probably like three plays later. It just like gave out on me. And I'm like, dang, man, like not the first scrimmage. Like, yeah. yeah. And I think like that first preseason game was maybe like a week away or so. Yeah, it was exactly a week away. So uh, I couldn't plan that. I was in rehab the whole time. Uh, the second preseason game, I was actually supposed to uh, come back for that. Is it the second or the third? So I was supposed to come back after doing rehab because I was like, you know, I don't really need my shoulder too, too much, but like right. just to hit and maybe like do a couple other little things. So I was trying to play, but then I got that call one day, that text. And like, hey, meet me up here. And yeah, all man, you get, and, hey, yeah, you get that text, man. Hey, come to the office. Or you get yeah. the trainer, hey, man, come by. They hey, somebody want to talk to you. You're in your room and the phone rings. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. that unknown number. Yeah, yeah, you, you definitely want to see that. You see that trash bag in your locker, and I'm like, dang. But, like, the crazy thing was, bro, like, when that happened, I didn't, like, cry about it. I wasn't mad or anything. I was like, oh, they done messed up. Cause when I get another chance, like yeah, they they gonna regret like letting me go. But then like after that, uh, I was doing like a little rehab and all that at home. My agent Kev he texts me. He like, yo, we gonna uh, try to get you a couple tryouts set up and all that. How your shoulder feel? I'm like, man, you know, forget the shoulder. Let's just go ahead and get these trials going in. Right, I know right. I can play football. I just got to get back in the just, building. I just got to get back in the building. Get things rolling again. Just yeah. get back. In, what we say, I tell people all the time, is it between being in shape and then being in football shape? Mm-hmm. Because you know you could be in shape all you want to a muscle guy, but when you're taking those blows every day, those muscles are bumping and you know. Uh, rubbing up against other people, man, and all that, it's a different level of being in shape because we know it, you know, once you get back in football and you'll know this probably this year, you can be in the best shape you want to be. But once you put that helmet back on and them pads and, and you might be in, you might even be you might even be in shells, might even be in full pads and it's you different. get the bumping and hitting, your body is definitely sore, man. So definitely. I feel you, man. So I, I feel you when you say you just want to kind of get back to rolling and yeah. just getting back out there on the field and proving that you know, hey, I can do this. And yeah. that, you know, Arizona had messed up, man. And and when I hear listening to your story, man, I I, I see like my story like Info unfolded the same way in 2016. Get excited with the Carolina Panthers, man. You know, going through the preseason with them, it's a learning curve. You know, in college was never a, little, a, a huge learning curve on defense for me. But you know, once we get to the ultimate level, well, there's a learning curve in it because I was playing the nickel position. So in the nickel, I'm learning all these different personnel groups and you know, 22 personnel, 21 personnel. Yeah. You know. All different type of personnel groupings on the field. Where in college, I didn't play a lot of corner and I played just a lot of safety. Mm-hmm. But granted, that helped me get an opportunity so I could play both. So like, well, we, they you know, uh, picked me up as a nickel. So playing in the nickel, I had to learn. I had to know so many, so much different stuff. Yeah. Like I say, it was a, you know, it was a learning curve. And you know, in a in a in a in a scrimmage, I get hurt. Shoulder, separate my shoulder. Same thing, separate my shoulder in the scrimmage, diving for a, um, they punt the ball off and it's like a, something that is live. Yeah. Which is, that's not really ever live in, in, in the NFL. You know this. Um, punt it to him, it's live. Guy uh, muffs the punt. I'm trying to recover it. Linebacker comes down, boom. Crazy. I'm trying to get it. And, you know, gunner missile, you go behind the guy, he drops it, I'm behind him, he dies for it, boom. 
Mm-hmm. Smack did it to my shoulder. Yeah, that's when you get mad at him, like, bro, what you doing, bro? Yeah, like, come I mean, on. he come out. I mean, he come. I mean, he and I, and I couldn't. You know, at first I was like, man, dang, man, come on. But it, 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 you know, as I as it set in, I couldn't really be mad because he's an undrafted free agent out of Iowa. Yeah. I'm undrafted, undrafted out of App State. We both trying to make the team. You know, we yeah. just clawing. You know, we know how it is being on the back end of a 90 man roster. You're trying to you know claw your way to the to the on this team some type of way, whether yeah. it's the practice squad or trying to inch out to the 53 man roster. You no know, what. Whatever it is, we're trying to just make it. So I couldn't even really be mad at him, but it was just like so unfortunate. Yeah. And the timing of it, because I felt like I was like really having a good camera and making some balls, man. One on one was like my thing. Mm-hmm. Like I could play man to man coverage, because I did it in college. I was the guy, hey, is that the, is that their guy? Then we're going to play 10 on 10. But you got him all over right. the field, slot, outside, whatever, you got him. So that was my thing, being able to play man to man coverage. Had good feet, know how to play, you know, uh, in the trainers going down to Miami working out. You know, learn how to play inch technique, off technique. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Learn how to play inch back on the foot. Fiery guys coming at me off the foot, off the line. It didn't bother me. So they seen that, and it was like, man, this guy can really play. But then the unfortunate injury happened. We know the best ability is availability, right? And it just and that just wasn't available, <laughs> man. man. I so learned that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I can't I come up short, man, and you know then I get the opportunity like you got with Indianapolis. I get an opportunity in uh, Minnesota, man, and it worked out for the better for a few years, man. Oh, so yeah. you know, being being an undrafted free agent, you know. You, when you're playing in the preseason, you're not only trying out for that team, you're trying out for all the other 31 NFL teams right. that it is. So you get a shot with the uh, Indianapolis Colts, and uh, and they, you join them in uh, September 2022. So what was it right. like in that first year, being on the practice squad and just getting those reps and just trying to get better and process everything each day? So, like, when I'm out there, dog, like, first off, like, I still can't even run full speed because my shoulder's still messed up. Right, right. So, like, I'm still rehabbing. But, like, my whole goal out there was just, like, you know, I'm with some good vets and uh, yeah. Stephon Gilmore, Kenny Moore, yeah, man. Uh, Rodney McLeod and all that. So I'm like, let me learn as much as I can from them. Like, even like on the field, but like learn stuff outside the field. Cause you know, networking really a big piece it is, of man. your life. So uh, I'm out there like, dog, let me just get better every day. Like even in the meeting room, I'm trying to learn the defense. Like I think it was probably like a hundred pages in that playbook. Uh, like the first two days I went over them. So I'm like, uh, the guys that just tried out came in and all that. We'll have, like, meetings with our coach after practice. But, like, you ask me a question, boom, I'm on it. So, you know, I know it. Like, I don't never want it to be no hesitation. So, my goal is just, like, show that I belong here. Like, even being on scout team, I'm guarding, like, great receivers like Michael Pittman, Michael uh, Pittman. Alex yep. Pierce, yep. and all that. So, I'm like, uh, let me lock them up. But, like, of course I'm supposed to give them a look. But, you know, I'm not finna make it easy. Like, right, my right. goal ain't to just be on practice squad forever. My goal is to be the, the best in the right, league. Right, so, right. I'm going to give y'all the best looks I can. That way on Sunday, y'all can go out yeah, there and go yeah. crazy. So, that was also another piece of it. So, but, man, I was just out there having fun, dog. I had a great group of guys around me that supported me as well. So, right, uh, I right. loved it. Right. When you name those guys like Gilmore, man, a guy that my cousin, he played with him out in uh, Carolina, man, uh, DJ Swanger was the safety and Gilmore was the corner. He always raved about how – you know how good of a guy Gilmore was, and like yeah. I said, and being a young guy, me coming into the league, those were one of the premier guys for me. Looking up a Gilmore, a Stephon Gilmore at the time was a guy that and he was to me was the best corner in the league, and still a, to me is still a top ten corner. You know, he's still a top. He's a little older now because I'm 32. Gilmore should be about 33, 34, yeah. somewhere yeah. around in that. But he's still a you know still a top top ten guy to me, and a guy that will definitely get a. Uh, Get some um, looks for the Hall of Fame one day. Definitely. Just winning that defensive uh, defensive player of the year or award, you know, at the cornerback position is very very hard to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he was able to do it, man. So shout out to him. And like you said, going into uh, Indianapolis, having those good veterans around you, but also when you uh, on the practice squad, competing every day and giving those guys a look. Not only just being there to just give them a scout team look, or this is how the defense gonna uh, look. This is what's gonna look like when we play Cleveland. This is what's gonna look like when we play Dallas or Philadelphia. You're, even though you give them a look, you're also getting the good work yourself. Right. So you can become a better player at right. the same time and making them better players, man. So, yeah, and uh, like speaking on that, like even for younger guys on the college level, like when you own that scout team, man, of course, you know, do what the card say and all that. But sometimes you just got to say like F it and like show them that you can really play, like really go ahead and strap that guy down because uh the end of the day you got a job to do as well. You don't That's just want to like – Make sure somebody else look good. Like make sure you you look make, good as yeah. well. You got to have a little selfishness in there. Yeah, you got to man. You got to like you said. Make sure you get better. Make sure you get your reps because you know we take the mental reps, but then we got to go out and put it on the field as well. Mm-hmm. So shout out to you for that, man. Like you said, giving those guys a little, but also making sure that you get your reps. So you know when we talk about the Indianapolis Colts, it was a uh, organization for me coming up always pretty successful. You know, pay Manny. 
you know, he he goes there, he takes them to new heights, and they, they do what they do, win a Super Bowl. I think they go to two, win one, and um, you know, Peyton takes them to great, uh, to great, great things. Mm-hmm. But you know, in twenty two, man, you kind of see when you come in on the practice squad, Frank Wright, a former uh, offensive coordinator with the Philadelphia Eagles, kind of know a little bit about him. You know, he's fired after four seasons being with the team. The coach bring in Pro Bowl offensive lineman Jeff Saturday. Mm-hmm. He's not in the building whatsoever. He's not on the coaching staff whatsoever. And I know sometimes when we're in the locker room and things that happen in the locker room, we don't really talk about it outside of the locker room. We keep it in-house, especially playing professional sports. So what was it like for you guys in the locker room, those coaches that had been here with you guys from the start of the 2020 season, and you bring in a guy from the outside? Very respected guy mm-hmm. in, in the uh, organization with the coach, also in the media. But you guys aren't familiar with him because he hasn't been there from the start. And you got guys like a Reggie Wayne, a Gus Bradley that's been on staff and know what's going on in 22. So how did you guys kind of receive uh, Jeff? And what was that like? Just that, you know, Frank getting fired, he's coming in. And how did y'all guys just take that? So, like, speaking from an overall experience, uh, so a lot of the guys on that team have been there for a couple years already. So they've okay. been with Frank for right. uh, his whole time there. So, like, with the new coach coming in, it's like, Ah oh, man, we don't really know how to feel, but uh, let, let's see how it goes and all that. Right. But uh, like for me, it was a little different because uh, I had just got there in September, so I didn't go through o- OTAs and camp with them guys. So I really right. didn't have like a relationship with. Yeah, you, Frank you didn't really have no tie. You just really have didn't have no tie with him because you was yeah. with um, my man King. What's his name? Chris, uh, King Clisberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you was with him in in in, in uh, Arizona, so you didn't right. go through the OTAs and the. All these different stuff, the team bonding, team building type yeah. activities. Now, when you come in Indianapolis, it's all about straight business, right? And you don't you don't really see it. And you come in in September, anyways. So we're already kicking off playing games. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So now everything is strictly down to business. And you know those guys, they you getting uh, familiar with the, the the guys on the team, but you don't really get familiar with the coaches, right? Like that until okay, I'm coming back the next year, and then you go through the OTAs and the off seasons, yeah. and now they're trying to, then now they they'll learn okay who Darrell Baker really is at the time. So I feel you when you said no really ties to Coach Wright like that at the time though. So I yeah. feel that. Yeah. So I, I took it as like when Jeff Saturday came in, I'm like, you know, let's give the dude a chance. At the end of the day, it's a business. That's but, it. Uh, you know, we here to win games regardless of how we feel about this person, or that it, person. Yeah. That's so it. So that that's the bigger picture for me, but. I was just like, I don't really care who the coach is. Let's let's just win. That's the let's only thing win. that matter, bro. Yeah. Cause long, as long as we keep winning or whatever, I still got a job. You still got a job. But if we losing, then as everybody you see, job. <laughs> everybody job is up. Of course, and like you said, in the NFL or in professional sports in general, winning cures it all. Mm-hmm. It can be so much stuff going on around the organization. It can be a bad organization. It can be an organization that's you know, filled with a lot of drama when you talk about the management upstairs and the people working upstairs and everything like that. But none of that stuff gets out if you win. And exactly. we've seen organizations before in the NFL, NBA, or Major League Sports where it's been uh, a madhouse, mm-hmm. but they win. Right. And <laughs> we'll take the Lakers, for instance, in the, in, in the early 2000s with Kobe and Shaq. Man, that was very, very crazy from what I hear from different players that have been around that time, yeah. older, older basketball players that knew about the Lakers, that it was a very, very uncomfortable situation for uh, a lot of people around it because those guys didn't really like each other like that, but they respected each other on the basketball court and they won together and right. that cured a lot of stuff going on. But as soon as they lost to the Detroit Pistons in 2004, we seen it start to unravel because now we're losing. Right, we've lost. The, we went to the finals. Well, 03, we lose in the second round. 04, we get beat by the Pistons in the finals. So now losing starts to creep in and all yeah. this other stuff starts to you know play a factor in yeah. that didn't play a factor anymore. It didn't matter if we went out went out and partied all night but we won yeah. and because you know sports is about winning and that's the bottom line and you know as long as the bottom line isn't compromised then you know there's yeah, no problem but as soon as that get compromises and, and everything else now becomes a factor where they're going out too much or they're partying too yeah. much they're doing this too much but that's when we exactly win but you like 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 I just said man winning cures also you know you guys man 2023 man you guys you, you uh, draft Anthony Richardson Anthony Richardson quarterback out of Florida man unfortunately he gets hurt early in the season you have a great camp, man. You start, you play in 14 games, you get six starts. The AFC South, last two years won by Jacksonville, this past year won by Houston. But it seems like Indianapolis has always been right there at yeah. the end, always still kind of in playoff contention, but just can't get over the hump. With everything you guys got going on now, you coming back another year. We got Anthony Richardson, a lot of some veterans coming back. You know, everybody's back again. You got a, uh, a head coach that's now in the second year. Mm-hmm. All you guys are coming back. So what is it going to take this year for the Indianapolis coach to get over the hump and get to the next level? Uh, I think it's just us, man. Uh, 
we we've improved on a lot, man. You know, we added a couple pieces, a couple great pieces at that, especially on that offensive side of the ball. So at, at that point, it just come down to like, you know, just who could score the most in our defense. We I feel like we already been good, so you know, we ain't gonna give up too many points and all that. So at that point, it's just staying in on the little things, just staying focused on the season. It, it, it's a real long grind, man. So staying focused for. What it is like 18, 17 games? Yes, so, eight, eighteen weeks, seventeen games. Yeah, it's so a long. Right. You know, it's a you go. You start. In, you start from August. Uh huh. You know, I mean, really start before August. You July. start in yeah. You start really say March. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Voluntary workouts, and you go all the way to the next year. So like I said, stand, just staying focused, man. Yeah. But and I, and I feel that about about in, in all sports, man, it's all about what we do. Yeah. It's not it's never really what the opposition is doing. We know there's some good teams out there, but when talent meets talent in the NFL, we know it's it's not about talent anymore. It's right. all about what we're doing as individuals, what we're doing as a team, yeah. what we're doing. It's not about what the outside is. Not even about the team that we're playing, it's all about us and how we prepare right. every day, how we go out and prepare each game, how we watching film, how we paying you know, close attention to details. Who on the stay field, discipline who gonna say discipline enough? I discipline as a defensive back, mm -hmm. and that goes for every position: DB, wide receiver, offensive lineman. So it's all about those small things for yeah. us. That for you know, just it's all. It's never really about outside of the building. It's all about inside of the building. And mm -hmm. I feel like the, the organization, the teams that can really focus and in home that, like a Kansas City, like a Philadelphia, you see a whole lot of success oh, yeah. with, in those organizations. But I feel like Indianapolis, man, you guys are right there, man. You guys are right there. You got some monsters now. In, you know, in in you guys' is uh, a division, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, the guy in Houston, man. He's uh, Strout. He's he's a, he's a hell of a player. Trevor Lawrence, big contract. He got to live up to it. So you know, he's gonna come out with something <laughs> to prove. You know, you guys got something to prove. Yeah. It, you know, the Titans are no slouch. It is uh, added Ridley with Hopkins over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Will Levis, young guy coming in. He has something to prove. Yeah. The AFC like South is gonna be very very competitive this year, man. Oh, yeah, very definitely. very very competitive. I, I still like us though over everybody, man. Oh yeah, got to. But got you just got to take it one week at a time. Just one a week time, at a time, dog. man. It's a long season, and man, you can be up one time and you can be down. You can mm -hmm. be in the middle. But I tell you what, all the time from my league experience, man, it's always good that you keep that even cool. Right. Keep it even cool through the season, whether you're up, you're down. We just got to stay focused, stay locked in, and take one week, one play, one week at a time, one play at a time, and everything else will work itself That's out. All it is. Don't get too high. Don't get too low, man. That's it, man. Darrell, man. Before we get out of here, always in my podcast, we all we got to, you know. Like we talked earlier, we gotta talk to the youth, reach back. Mm -hmm. You're a guy that has came in, and myself as well, undrafted guy, walk on in college, kinda overlooked, for whatever reason it had may be, it may be. What would be your advice, young men, young women out here in sports, not only here in the CSRA, but just in the, this here in, in the United States, whoever's gonna watch this podcast, being overlooked and is trying to get to the next level, what would be your advice to them? Man, I would say, like, if you think you overlook, man, give them something to look at. And that's going to be, like, a big thing. Like, you just got to show up in more than one way. Like, just do what you got to do because it, it's possible, man. No matter how hard you may think it may be, how you feel, it's possible. Like, you see guys like me, zero scholarship opportunities, uh, undrafted. But you, you can do it. Like, you just really got to have that discipline and that faith. And you just got to, like, keep going every day. And, like, yeah find that why your why might change it sometimes but like through those dark days just just keep going man you just gotta Sweet. like really just hone in and find it man it's bigger than you it gets greater later work hard now to make it easy later that's it man work hard now to make it easy later man we def i definitely can relate to that you know like i said it's always bigger than us for me when i played and i know when you played man i seen you mention in other podcasts man it was about family so for me it was all about family putting my name out there man trying to put my parents and family in position, but also putting that work in and that grind. Right. I believe I fell in love with that more than I fell in love with actually playing, yeah. was the grind, was the, when I when I got there and made it, I was like, okay, I got here. But I loved it better, I liked it better, when I, when no one knew me and I was mm -hmm. coming out of nowhere, it was, the, the grind was so much more uh, appeasing for me, right. you see what I'm saying? Because no one know me, now I know, like it's motivation, I'm coming out of nowhere. But then once I made it, well, you're in the league now, but now you're in the league and you still got stuff to prove now. Yeah. Like I said, Indianapolis Colts, 2024, getting ready to take off. Anthony Richardson, he's in his second year. You're coming into your, what, third year, right? Yep, going into year three. You're going into year, you're going into year three, and, and now you're, you're like friend starter, man. You should be a starter coming up here this year. A lot of, you, you, I, you know, 
watched you, man. You've made some plays on the field. The defense in Indianapolis has been pretty solid here mm-hmm. in the past couple of years. The offense has got to give you guys a little help, man. Gotta keep, <laughs> can't, I can't keep you guys on the field, man, for so for so long. But I feel like well, if they can develop Anthony and get him right, then I think everything will come together for you guys, man. I agree. Like, but, man, man, but, man, for me to you, man, definitely want to say thank you for coming on my podcast. Thank you for coming back and speaking to the youth. We need guys like yourself, man, coming here, man, telling your experience, letting them know it can be done if you stay disciplined. If you have faith, it can be definitely be done. So for mm-hmm. me to you, the real man, appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you, dog. Man, definitely th- thank you, man, coming on the podcast, man. This is uh, the Darrell Baker, man, cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts. This is Press Coverage Podcast. Like, share, tell someone about it. Thank you. We out of here. Yes, sir. Love. La, la, la. song for my haters, yeah, y'all got me feeling like the greatest.